for the audience a little bit about you, how long you've been with EXP and what is your organization is, is, is um, so far. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is May. I've been with EXP for almost four years. Started out as a brand new agent, so proudly say, born and raised by EXP, thanks to this guy right here. I was able to build my organization to over 100, so it's currently 106. Wow, uh, right now. <laughs> and we just successfully bring over a small brokerage with five people coming over. So that's definitely something that we achieved yes, last week, right? Yeah, yes, last week. Yes, and I am here to be an open book for everyone and just to share with you what I learned so far. And of course, I cannot do this alone. I'm really thankful for my leaders in my team, for Tuan, for Kat for other uh, leaders in my team that were able to along with me in this journey. We had to always start somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, are you guys ready to get that residual income coming in your bank? Absolutely. You know, like three, <laughs> five thousand. That's a huge relief, you know, when production is low, when you're quitting your full-time job, uh, unfortunate things happen in your life. It's a good cushion of income. Coming in. Yeah, yeah. I remember my first <coughs> relief paycheck, if you will. It's actually when Joanna, I know you remember, Joanna, you are the first agent that I actually see on my revenue share dashboard. You close a very small lease. I believe it's $1,000 to 2500 And I don't know about it, but one day I log on, on, onto my.exp.com. I see $5. I was like, man, this is a $5 I don't have to work for. <laughs> so I know this thing works. I need to work at it. So that five dollar just really fired me up, and and we can go from there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm uh, super excited uh, to talk to you today. I want to really bring you on because you you have so many creative ways to be able to connect with people and then engage with them in the conversation to bring them into the opportunity, right? So if you don't mind, let's see. Do you have anything that you yeah, want to? Yeah, I do, I do. Yeah. So let me share some, let's say, ground information first, mm -hmm. and then we can go deep down into questions of what you're really looking for. To be honest, before we're sitting here, I was quite down when it comes to Asian attraction about three weeks ago. So uh, there was some way, at some point in your real estate or Asian attraction game that you was like, are you sure this one is working? And um, is it worth the time that I'm putting in? We always have a doubt. The, yeah, there's a doubt in there. And um, luckily, you know, as I think what really helped me um, in the last three weeks is I just start connecting again with my core value of what was the purpose of me getting into this agent attraction and just connect again with my leaders. So I reach out to Amanda, I reach out to Hui, just, hey, what's going on? What's your business going? Just get in touch with them again, find out the core value of why we're doing this. I remember we're just sitting in um, the office seeing Kai and just chatting about what's going on. It's good to reconnect again with the core value. And I also go back with EXV and sit down and see what is the product that I believe in? Is this still something that I really believe in? Is this something that I'm still feel confident and comfortable to share with my people, my agents, and to continue my goal of building my next leaders? Yeah. So just on that thought, right, <coughs> if you want to write it down, it's really important. I don't even believe I need it, but I do need it, right? So whenever you have doubt, when you have your question, the person you're going to call is going to be your upline, your senior business partner, right? Mm -hmm. We have the word in agent attraction. You always told up, you never told down, right? You don't gossip the, the, the thing down to, to your organization. You know, that is a sure, one of the sure ways to kill the business. When you have, whenever you have issue, when you have doubt, you have to throw up. You cannot throw it down, right? So that's mm -hmm. the key. You have to throw it up. And then let your senior business partner, let your upline remind you of why are you getting into the business, right? Mm -hmm. I need that, may need that, we all need that. But as a leader, you have to throw up. You cannot throw down because if you throw down, you cast doubt into your organization, that's when things get really disconnect. Yeah. Yep. Leadership was the word of why you, I love about EXP, right? Sometimes, is it, are you volunteer to be a leader? No, you grow to become a leader. Either thank you to your mentor, to your people, but gradually growing to become the leader that you think that would help 
your agents, your business partner to grow, to become the next leader to their group. So my ultimate goal is always to duplicate me. It's cool to be able to grow the group of 100 people in three years, three and a half years. But I would not be able to do it without Tuan's group, without Kat's group, which is maybe one half of my group already. And I would be one third of his group, for example. Yeah. So we always see the, it's hard for us to scale up mm. either in production or in Asian attraction. Mm. And if you have a leader, if you have somebody that ride along with you, it will be easier and faster yeah. and more scalable in yeah, that so way. So I'm I going to touch on that point real quick since we, we talk about the, math, the, the mathematics behind uh, <coughs> revenue share today. When you look at my group, it looks really scary, like 350 people, right? Who is going to recruit 350 people? And then when you look at Amanda group, there's a thousand people. Who is going to attract a thousand people, right? It's going to take a lifetime of work to do that. But when you really break it down, your organization is really make up of one of the few key people, right? I am one third of Amanda group, so all Amanda needs is me, right? And then one third of her revenue share paycheck is taken care of, right? When I look at my group, one third of my group is May, one third of my group is Elva, right? So one third of my revenue share paycheck is taken care of. And then I have Tao, I have Kai, I have Joyner. So if you really bring down to all the leaders, there's only there's five and six of them, right? And then you work really close with them to help them de de develop their group further. And you always make it a goal. Look at your web chart. I always make it a goal to identify two new leaders in my group. And then I find two new leaders in, 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 in the outside bringing in, right? So I look down in my organization. By going here, you show interest in Asian instruction, right? So I, I'm going to look in this group. And I'm going to narrow it down to two people, right? Hey, out of, of the meeting today, who is the two people that I can develop on, train on, and pour my heart and soul into them, right? So I'm going to pick out these two people, and you should do the same to your organization. And that is going to how you duplicate and grow so fast. Mm -hmm. Not by attracting thousands of people, but by, by pick out a few, very few key people and help them grow. And going back to the 80-20 the rules, right? You, don't, you only have that certain hours per day, per week. You don't want to spread it to everyone because it's, you're going to be feel emotional drainage if you just spread yourself too much. So you're going to prioritize 80% of your time. You're going to be focused, invest into your top 20 people. So if I have 100 people in my group, of course I know my top 20 people of who really take this business seriously, seriously. that I feel comfortable to put my time in there instead of doing my playtime with my kid or instead of you know talking to another client on production. Right? So B, um, I want to touch base on what your tools, what needed that you want to look into your package of items before <coughs> you go and work for the agent attraction. So some of the, um, let's say, characteristic that I feel would be helpful when it comes to agent attraction. Um, the number one is be mindful. So um, again, going back to your time, be mindful of who you talk to. Be mindful of how much time that you spend to talk to somebody. I do see some of the mistakes from my end as well that I learn and grow from is I can spend a lot of time helping a new agent who may not be serious about his or her real estate career. Because we have so many new agents coming in, right? But you know, out of the 50% of that new agents, of course, not gonna sit here in two years three years, but imagine the amount of time that I spend for this particular person that say, I go to open house with her. I go, uh, I do a little canvas, I do all kind of things. It's a lot of time that I invest in her, but at the end of the day, she is not the one who wanted enough. I'm the one who want her to be successful, but she's the one that's not focusing in her career. And ending up, I spending so much time putting in it, but the result coming out is not really... Um, Proportional. Yeah, proportional with the time that I invest in. So now I sit down and I was like, okay, so before I spend my time for this new agent, I'm gonna investigate a little about her profile first. Is she plugged into EXE training? Is she taking her real estate career seriously? Is this something that she wants? So I do a little observation first before I decide to put my time and effort into it, just so I will make sure that I spend 80% of my time to the 20% top income producing task just so I don't feel drainage and yeah. step, a step yeah. back. Yeah, and then later on, <coughs> or on uh, when Kai is gonna show up, we really gonna have a discussion about what does it mean to be a sponsor mm -hmm. and what does it mean to be a mentor, right? 
I personally make a mistake of kind of lump those two things into one, uh -huh. but it's actually two separate things. So the, if you can separate that and leave that mentor responsibility to a real mentor that EXP has been trained and developed, that would be a better business model for your agent right. instruction. Right? Yeah. That's my number one item. Be mindful not only to your time, but also your finance situation as well. So I could be so excited about growing agent attraction that there was one time that I invest all of my revenue for that month to my agents. That's a little bit too much, like too generous, because that may not bring out the outcome that I wanted. So now as I listen to him, he spent 10% of his revenue paycheck to invest back to his people, that makes sense. So now I'm gonna go back and I gonna be more mindful about the numbers as well, of how much I wanna invest when it comes to financially to my agents. Because at the end of the day, we're doing business. We have to make it profitable yep. in order to make it sustainable. Asian adjustment is a long-term growth mindset. So you cannot come in and say, oh, let me work on this and the next three months, I should see some result. Asian adjustment is more on investing in the, in the people and finding your right leaders, building your empire. So it's a long-term game. It's good to have that residual income. If you think about buying a real estate and wait for it to be on equity, it's gonna take time, right? You cannot buy it and expect it to go to appreciate in six months, one year, and get the equity right away. No, you gotta wait until maybe two years, three years, five years, 10 years in order to have the equity that you wanted. So you have to enter this Asian attraction game with the mindset that it's a long-term growth. So that's, that's mean that you don't put the pressure into you that, oh, I'm working so hard, but there's no good result coming in. Less yeah. pressure on your end. Yeah, and that's the reason I, I bring out a web chart. <coughs> uh, this is nothing, just a visual reminder for you to put in front of the, either your office or any area in your office or your home that have high traffic, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we're a real estate agent. We have, we, we have a family to take care of. It looks, it's gonna look better for you to, hey, let's go hunt for this buyer lead or let's go to the listing appointment. But if just make a commitment to, let's say, go to this appointment with this agent, right? This appointment, this listing is gonna pay you one time and then you get fired. But the appointment with the real estate mm -hmm. agent once, once it's converted, it's going to pay you over and over and over, right? Mm -hmm. So I use the wealth chart as always my reminder, right? Hey, I know I'm busy. I have long-term rental, short-term rental, I have flip. I have 10 things calling me in an hour. My phone is blowing up, but this is important, right? I will spend time on my wealth chart no matter what. My third tool when it comes to your mindset and preparation before you do agent attraction is your, set your mental, mentally right when it comes to your leadership skill. So it could be somebody, sometime in your life, you always need that little push in order to move forward. You may be scared, you may feel worried, but again, just when you take a leap of faith, trust in the progress. And then if somebody say, give you the opportunities, you never know if that, what door, that door is opening up to. So always keep, them prepare that you're gonna be the next leader for your people to your team so don't be hesitant to say yes to something that you may not completely comfortable to be there's so many times that he asked me hey do you want to do this presentation or you want to talk to this group of people my first thought would be no because I don't think I'm good to to stand up and speak to everyone but I the answer is gonna be yes. Yeah. I want me to get a chance to say yes to more opportunities because I do think each opportunity is door to the next adventure that can change my business. If I didn't say yes to that opportunity when you share me the mm -hmm. whole idea about EXV, I'm not here. I'm not going to be able to connect with that many people. I realized that I connect and learn with more people in the last three, four years than the last 10 years I've been in other uh, career yeah. right <coughs> so it's amazing to connect with other people and grow your organization yeah and then I don't know what else you have in your note but I, I really want to bring out your story because you have so many good story when it comes to connecting people especially mm -hmm. with, with Michael he's gonna onboard with us soon so if you don't mind share with us what is the actual process of how do you get connecting with Michael because for me when I look at it it's just too far apart yeah. right from different culture different world different background Everything between you and that Asian is, is on the opposite end. Mm -hmm. So how are, you gonna, how are you able to marry the process? And then the next thing I notice, I'm engaged in a conversation. Amanda get engaged and then the time to convert is one week for yeah. a new lead. 
Yeah. That is amazing. For so, the independent brokerage. Yeah. That's pretty cool, right? So remember earlier, I said that I was quite down in about a, a month ago about agent attraction. So I did, and it was the perfect time because when we start the new year of 2024, what was your goals, right? So I had my goal when it comes to my production. I want to attract other people through my productions. But now I took my time to set my goal for agent attraction as well. What was my goal? And I put down into my schedule exactly what I want to keep up and break down into smaller tasks when it comes to my weekly calendar. Mm -hmm. So what I did was to have a little sticker. I actually saw it from Amanda Note that talked to an agent and I make sure that I talk to one agent every single day. And it's just like a symbol sticker on a, my notebook, and it's just as easy as that. So for that day, I know that I want to check, cross that check done list, because I wanted to uh -huh. check my box every day. I need to talk to an agent. And it had to be like somebody that I haven't visited. Yeah. So I just recently, another brokerage, independent brokerage, they just add me on Facebook, we connect. And I was like, oh, I need to talk to somebody. So I just um, messaged him. His name is Michael. And just like, nice to connect with you. And then he was like, nice to connect with you. And then the next thing was like, how is your business? And he started sharing about a little bit about his business. One of, I'm going to share with you what, some of my favorite questions of how you can engage and connect with another agent on the, either on the phone, by the coffee table, or on social media. <coughs> but I was just casually getting to know him. And um, he was like, how long have you been in business? He was like, four years, five years. And I was like, yeah, me the same, uh, four years. And then start the conversation very naturally. Nothing EXP related, nothing recruiting related. And then he was like, oh, i building my own broker. I'm looking into recruiting. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I love the ideas of recruiting as well. Agent attraction is my thing. And actually, we have an upcoming training. And we actually have a training on agent uh, attraction hosted by uh, Marisa on the Tuesday, and then I just share that link to him and leave it there. And if he wanted enough, and then he actually the one who come in, take the chance, took his chance to listen into that presentation. And then what I did after that is I just follow up. What did you think about the okay. training, yeah. about recruiting? Because I know that he run his own broker. He want to recruit agents to his broker. And he was like, oh, that's cool. It's good to learn about the culture of the group and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And then what would be my follow-up question? I was like, would you like to sit down on a coffee? And then I'm going to set up my follow-up thing after each of the conversations. Yeah. So I didn't have to spend much time chatting on the phone uh, or just spend too much time on, on following up. I just like, coffee? And then he's, okay, coffee. And then the next second appointment would be on a coffee. And I set my time for the coffee as well. I gonna okay to spend my time with an hour, see what Michael and just listen. I would like to listen more about his story. What is yep. his rock in his shoes? What is he struggling with? So I wanna find out that rock. And for me, I would, as a leader, you don't want to find out a solution, right? You wanna sort out and see how you can help to add more value into that particular person. So I know as an independent brokerage, bring in new agents, Training is tough. So I listened to his story and I shared with him, oh, the story about how EXB have trainings, mm -hmm. support, multi-level of support. And sorry, he get engaged, he feel more comfortable, is feel interested. He shared with me that he heard about the idea of EXB a couple years ago, but nobody actually spent time and sit down and explain to him. And I'm the first one who sit down at the coffee table and kind of share with him about that. And guys, just want to stop you on that. I hear that all the time, especially we mentioned Recruit Up. I've been, I, I call two of the top producer and that is, that is the exact script that they, they gave me. Hey, I'm so glad that you actually spent the time to help me look at the number. I heard about EXP, but nobody actually really showed me what is really from behind. Yeah. I hear that all the time from the broker, the top producer, they appear so big yeah. that everybody is afraid of calling them. Yeah. It, it's crazy. It blew my mind. Yeah. He's yeah. been, Michael, been in the business longer than me. He has the broker. He, he doing everything. He had more followers on me on social media. So it's a lot of things, but remember you recruit up, then recruit down. Yeah. And then I was mindful of how much time I spent. It doesn't matter is that a, like a broker or independent or just like a new agent. I'm gonna be mindful of how much time I spend into building my relationship yeah. in that particular agent, just so I don't Yeah, just on, on, on this note, if you, if you notice, on all my three-way uh, phone call or three-way appointment, 
although I might not have anything going after, I always <coughs> appear in a hurry. So yeah. if you're gonna call me as, hey, I'm so glad that you get connected. I'm actually on my way to my next appointment. I'm actually on my way to an airport. I'm actually on my way to another meeting, but I've got 10 minutes, what's yeah. going on? So I reframe it. So that way I can shut the appointment down in 10 minutes mm -hmm. if I don't like the lead. Or if I really like her, I can either extend or I can use it. Hey, unfortunately we run out of time. Let's book another appointment, right? So the goal for you is not to convert on that day, but the goal is to book an appointment from an appointment. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do it, you have to limit the conversation in 10 minutes, right? If I call Kay and say, hey Kay, I have all day for you, right? Kay is not gonna value it, but if I call Kay, I told her that I only have 10 minutes for her and then I'm gonna disappear. Mm -hmm. She's gonna make sure she milk me for that 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. You always have to do that. Buyer, seller, age instruction. Yeah. Do that. Yeah, the more that you get into agent attraction, you can find out that it's so similar to just working with seller and buyers. Same thing. Very similar to production. So if you are doing amazing at your production, then believe in you that you're gonna do amazing at agent attraction as well. Yeah. So going back to Michael's story, what would be my follow-up appointment? That would be a Zoom sitting. Because I know Michael is interested in investment. He loves to build his own community, black community. So I start feeding him some information about the EXB black community, one EXB here, EXB of how we grow on diversity. And I know he's interested in investment. So I say, let me connect you with my mentor. The reason why I joined EXB, he has an amazing investment portfolio. Do you want to set up like another 20 minutes? I purposely said that it's going to be 20 minutes. And we just work on how we can add more values to your business. And then on that Zoom, I'll bring Hui in and then introduce him, set the stage for him to shine. And then I go play with my kid. I'm just kidding. I yeah. was there. And, she go, uh, milk. And yeah, then. but I was like, milk. <laughs> and then it was, there was some point I was like, let me just turn off the camera. But at that point, when we set up the stage right to your closer, just imagine you are the bridge to connect the agent, the lead to your closer and don't do anything, don't be EXB sales. you don't wanna say EXB, 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 you're just gonna be, let me connect you with this amazing person, or let me just connect with my leader, and then the next thing I connect, he, I set his stage to shine, and his take over. And as a closure, you, he knows what exactly to talk to, what values to add on into, to make that agent feel like yep. this is, an ama amazing opportunity yeah. for him. And by talking with Michael, you know, <coughs> open up my mind as well, right? Sometimes we get lost in our own pond, little pond, and then sometimes I even forgot my, my value, right? I have so much to give. I, I really know the investment world, but everybody around my circle, giống như Việt Nam là bụp gần nhà nói không thiên á. Yeah. So everybody around my circle, it doesn't matter what I say, they're not gonna do it. Mm. But people in the other community, they are looking for a guy to come in and, and help open up that world. By talking with Michael, I was like, man, he is appreciate of my knowledge, my expertise. He, he doesn't have that connection in his life. He doesn't know a guy who does 90 flip. What about midterm rental, short-term rental, long-term rental? And all of a sudden, may make the connection, and then the closing for me is just natural. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes you just have to go out your own pond because maybe your value, it can be de better delivered somewhere. And, and that is going to bring diversity into your group. And, and, and like I say in the beginning, diversity is going to be one of the key in 2024 and 2025 moving forward. People is looking for that. Yeah, it's just like when you do production as well, right? We, for, some, for example, I talked to Hannah. She just got her license. And then I was like, oh, where are you uh, located? She said, Garland. But Tuan was winning that market. Because Tuan, who's been in the business for six, seven years, is so long ago. She is amazing at social media. So just imagine if Hannah coming in and her only focus is Vietnamese community clients in Garland. Tuan is gonna be quite mm -hmm. co as the competitor in, in, in growing your career, right? But just imagine, oh, if you just cross out Vietnamese, you're gonna open up your pond into more diverse client base. I know that Kai is good focus on a lot of clients who are coming from different culture, communities. Just don't focus everything on one point. Don't put all your eggs into one basket. If you just expand and keep the basket out, just like lead generation, you only have to keep at least four pillars of lead generation. The same for agent attraction. Just keep different basket, different pillars of where you generate your own leads. And one thing that I want, so the, just to summarize that story with Michael, everything happened in less than two weeks. So you cannot say the wrong thing to the right people. So when I, if Lynn from my group, 
She was in the business way before me as way well. Than us, yeah. And when I attract Lynn over to EXB, that was when I see, oh, I think EXB is a good model for her to grow. Or to Ituan even, she was more experienced than me four years ago when I first started as a brand new agent. If I keep my momentum of recruit down, then I only recruit new agents, right? It's, it's gonna limit my, my opportunity to attract somebody like Lynn or Tuan, who's been to, in the business for so long. And they, if they are the right people, you just cannot say the wrong thing to them. If they open up to the opportunity to grow, if they open up to opportunity for long-term residual income, then it's a game changer. So don't, you don't be afraid to share, and you just cannot say the wrong thing to the right people. Yep. Mm, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so that would be some of my takeaways from the last couple of weeks. I do know that in, in order to keep up with the momentum and your motivation when it comes to age and attraction, it's not easy. You can do it just like one day, two days. In, in order for you to be in this room, I know that you take it serious to grow your career, whether you part-time, whether you full-time, build that trust in you and start connect more with the other leaders in your team. And let's work together. Just don't try to do everything by yourself. Yeah. yeah. This is totally teamwork. Somebody yeah. do the invite, somebody else is gonna do the closing, somebody else <coughs> is gonna do the onboarding. So that way you can scale it really like a business. Yep. When you feel like doing, if you do everything by yourself, if you attract an agent by yourself with no help and then it's not sustainable. I'm yeah. telling you this. Yeah, it's a real business and it's very rewarding. So a little story about me that when I had my second son, <coughs> I was able to take a step back from my production because I know that there's a residual income coming in. So I would be okay if I want to spend time to take care of myself or I want to spend time with my newborn. So it gives you more opportunities in life to really take off when it comes to, to keep on going. Because sometimes as a realtor, you can realize that you are just like a hamster in the hamster world. <clears throat> when you stop, there's no, nothing coming in. When you stop generating lead, there's gonna be no closing for you. And, you can, and one day you're gonna feel burned out. So we have to always work on the ethic strategy of what would be the next thing that you can, you can, yep. you can grow. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So as a closing task for this panel, yeah, keep, keep it business. <coughs> Keep it simple for me. I always reach out to the agent in my circle, always expanding my circle. Mm -hmm. I do video, not only for buyer, for seller. My, the, the production side is a cash flow shop, but the cash flow notepad is the is a site for the agent, right? So we do a lot of video, we drive the traffic into that website. And then after that, it's like a funnel, right? You can use your video and then you capture the lead, you follow up with them, you reach out to them on social media after they follow you. And then you make the, you do the reach out, you make the appointment. Yeah, and before I want to end up my section by this goal that I set for 2024, that I want to share it to the public just so I going to feel responsible to stick with the goal that I going to believe in agent attraction, not agent recruiting. Yeah. So I'm not going after agents to beg them or to say, hey, this is amazing, come to me. Instead, I would love to attract other agents either in my community or other communities who are going to either research about me see what I have already presenting on social media, learn about EXB. So right now, even when I talk to somebody that don't know anything about EXB, I'm gonna send him or her a video just about EXP first and want that person to make sure they watch that video just so I'm gonna save my time explaining a very basic stuff about EXP. So I'm gonna attract more, not recruiting. Yeah. And that would be my end goal. And in that way, I'm gonna limit down my cost of the time, of the money that I put in order to bring an agent over. So by that, I'm gonna whether do more videos, be mindful about what I share on social media, put down as much as helpful information as possible. So if somebody Google me, if somebody looking for a team, if somebody looking somewhere to grow, then it's everything already on there on social media. If somebody is serious about doing this, they're gonna of course research about you. Just like how a buyer or a seller going with you, working with you, they would know about you already. They're not just randomly say, I wanna work with Lily because I like how she look, right? They're gonna research and they wanna check your credibility. So I want to present everything already on the table. And in that way, I wanna attract more instead of going yeah. after and do recruiting. Yeah, it's called Asian attraction, not Asian begging. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it on your, on your Google, May, if, if everybody look up May on Google, she have a poster that say buying a house. She have a product that say buying a house. 
selling a house and then joining my team. And I actually copy, just rip up and duplicate. And we have leads coming you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and we have lead coming in from Google. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's just very simple thing, but you have to be mindful and treat it like a business. Hey, this is my production business. I'm serving buyer, I'm serving seller. And this is my attraction basis where I'm serving agent. Yeah. Uh, so try to marry that into, uh, in, in, into your system. Yeah. 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 Any uh, questions from everyone? Thank you so much for yeah. listening. Thank you. Thank you. Why are we all going? Yeah, Joanna. So how do you structure your calendar? Like, do you have like days for agent attraction, production, because I know you do a lot of things. So yeah. What, what's your schedule? Yeah, let's just target into agent attraction, right? So I, again, I have my own sticker. Uh, that I have to talk a part, uh, to an agent every single day. It doesn't matter who the agent that I talk to, I wanna check off that every day. It can be like a follow-up text, or it can be something that I message on online. But I make sure that I talk to an agent every single day. And then I have a list, and that could be helpful when we do the well chart, or mm -hmm. look over the well chart, that I know the agents that I'm working on. And then it can be the agents that in your community, it can be an agent that you just closed the deal with. It's, and then just set up at least, uh, right now, I set up two lunch per week with an agent. So it just don't eat lunch alone. I just gonna do 30 minute, 45 minute lunch with an agent. And during that lunch, I just listen to see what is their story, what is their rock and their shoes, and how I can add more value into that particular agent. And I invite agents that are working with me on the deal. If I if you're working with rentals, you're gonna have a lot of agents to connect as well. So I don't keep my pawn small. I'm gonna reach out and see who I can talk with. I follow somebody from Instagram, she looks great. I would love to say, hey, you wanna connect? Or find a way that sit down and talk with them. And I set at least two lunch appointments every week with an agent. Yeah, and I'm gonna add on to that uh, because I struggle with it as well. As a business owner who have multiple business, sometimes you are all over the place. And I actually learned it from an EXP training. Uh, I have a team on every day, so let's say Monday, it's a long term, it's the investment day. If I have free time, I'm gonna have my task, I'm gonna time block. <coughs> but if I have any free time during that day, I'm gonna focus on my own investment on Monday. And then Tuesday is agent interaction day. We have a Tuesday production Zoom training. We have this, I have, I have that. So usually Tuesday, my team, if I put it on the top of my calendar, you're gonna say personal investment, Monday, Tuesday, agent attraction, right? So my Tuesday, I always think about agent attraction, right? I was planning event with you, I was planning event with Sydney, anything related to agent attraction is on Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. And then Wednesday is production, it's my client, right? The buyer, the seller, the this and the that. Yeah, I keep all my business running, but each day I focus on different things, yeah. right? To move the ball forward. Yeah. And that's just, that's just keep my sanity down. <laughs> yeah, and I have that little time block on Thursday like just an hour, go back to my agent attraction. I can do anything that agent attraction related mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. And then if you follow a checklist, just have a checklist whenever you close a deal. I know you close so many deals with so many agents. Just have a checklist, right? You don't, the deal is not finished when you close, right? The deal is finished when you invite an agent to lunch or coffee. That's when the deal is finished. So have that checklist. Yeah. And then just like May say, it's a very casual conversation of, hey, thank you so much for working with us on, the, on this deal. If you like that agent anyway. Some agent after I work yeah. with, I don't want to see them again. I know. <laughs> so that, don't bring that agent over. I don't want to it's see them again. So I was like, oh my God, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> right? Don't, don't so bring them over. Them. But the person is really nice on the other, on the side. I never closed a deal this uh, smooth before, if you don't mind. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah, just don't bring somebody that can destroy the culture that you've been building yeah. for your team. Yeah. So connect with the people. And usually what I realize is like, I'm going to attract the people with same mindset. Yeah. yeah. So join that might be another checklist for you. I, I start <coughs> doing this. If you have a favorite title company, I actually have a stack of books of John Maxwell. I have a stack of books. I leave it there like a gift bag with a $5, $10 Starbucks gift card. If I'm there, I will give it to that agent on that closing, in front of them, on their closing, right? I ask the title company, what time is their closing appointment? I go there and I'm gonna say in front of my client, it's like, hey May, thank you so much for working with me. You are wonderful to work with. And Mr. Buyer, Mr. Seller, I just want to know that your agent is amazing. Mm. Right? I say that in front of their agent. Mm. Do you think they're gonna remember me? So I do that. If I have time, and I will make time for it. If I, can't, if I cannot make it, the title company, she will do that on my behalf. And I always get a text, get a thank you, and they reach out to me instead of me reach out to them. Yeah. Hey, I got your gift back. Thank you so much. Nobody ever did this to me. Just want to say thank you. And then you can start a conversation. 
It's something as simple and as automatic as that. Yeah. Built it in into your business. Add it on top of your business. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when I start putting my goal into 2024 and more mindful when I put my goals into this, I able to attract how many? Five, just beginning of the year to this one. And I only have 17 for the previous four years. So what I said, trying to say is just only that three, four weeks. But if you really might fall and set goal and treat it like a business, then good things start coming along. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Thank you, Joanna, for your questions. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, if there's nothing else, I think we're going to break for lunch and okay. we, we have an hour. Uh, I need to mastermind with you and then, and then we're going to have a, another panel with Riley. Yay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone.